Coming right up, a special edition of Straight Talk, Leadership in Tough Times, the city of Long Beach with Long Beach Mayor Bob Foster. A special thank you to our special edition sponsor. Opinions expressed in the following program do not necessarily reflect the views of Charter Communications nor its sponsors. We recognize our obligation to present opposing points of view by responsible spokespersons. For information, please contact the director of program. She stands in the face of evil and will not lose hope or faith. America, the land of freedom, is still the home of the brave. Great Talk is brought to you in part by Southern California Edison. For over 100 years, life powered by Edison. The Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. And Long Beach Magazine. Coastal living, city style. <laughs> Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. We're delighted you're joining us for the first show of our 17th season on air. And we're very honored to have as our guest for the entire show, the mayor of Long Beach, the Honorable Bob Foster. Bob, welcome back to Straight Talk. It's a pleasure, Art. Let's talk about uh, leadership in tough times. That's the title of our show. And uh, we all are aware of the budget deficit facing the city, 18 million. Uh, how are we going to close it? Uh, well, we have a plan to close it. Uh, we have a, kind of an A and B proposal. It depends a lot on what employees do. 85% of the, the, the budget is really in personnel costs. So uh, what we're trying to do is to have employees defer, actually not even defer. My proposal is to have any future contracted raises go to pay their share of pension costs. What I'm looking at is I'm looking at the budget as a three-year issue. I want to make sure that by 2014 we get to financial stability. And to do that, we have to have pension reform. We have to make sure that public safety costs don't exceed 70% of the budget. We've got to look at the budget over a three-year period. And it's going to require everyone to give up something. This is This is... In order to get back to where we're not in a zero-sum game, we've got to make these reforms, and then we have to work on making sure we incent the private sector to now produce more revenue. Uh, police represent about 50% of the general fund. Fire, about 20%. Uh, other city employees bring it up, as you said, to 85%. I read recently that the uh, city prosecutor's office, the city attorney's office, and the city auditor's office came to an agreement with the city where they would forego the raises, but the raises would be put into the increasing uh, the employee uh, uh, contribution to uh, their pension funds, which historically were low. And the, the, the raises that were not given uh, go towards increasing the employee share. Now let's make this real simple. I came out uh, in my budget recommendation and said we have to have pension reform. Uh, if we, we're going to have budgets like this or worse every year if we don't. So what I said is, since we already have contracts that go out in some cases three or four years, all the raises that are contracted for will now go to all employee groups. That's my proposal, including public safety. That those raises, which we're paying now, that portion of their pension costs, will now go to, to fill up their responsibility on their pension. And I think costs. most taxpayers would think that employees should be paying their share they should. of their pension no, costs. No, they should. Look, for years, look, let's be candid. For years, what happened is it was a way of giving a raise with being uh, under the radar. 
and, and kicking it down this, the road. This, and kicking it down the road. We can't do that. We're yeah. down the road. Yeah. So the, the, the can's at, at our doorstep, certainly at my door, doorstep, and I won't kick it down the road. So we're, and the worst thing for the city is to just roll this back one year. Everybody forego their raises and we'll do this again next year and the problem will be bigger. We have to solve this now. And three smaller uh, employee groups that I just mentioned have agreed to this. Well, they've agreed. Let me make sure you understand what they agreed to. They agreed, to, as my understanding, I haven't seen it yet, but what I've heard is that they've agreed to take their contracted raises, apply them to their share of the, the employee pension costs, to establish a two-tier system that new employees, in their case, uh, the pension would now go from its current 2.7 uh, times the years of service at 55 to now 2% at 60 right. for new employees. We can't right. take away a benefit right, they right, have. Right, right. Uh, uh, if, if an, and to move to the three-year uh, the three -year average, you know, your pension is now calculated not on your highest salary, but on your, uh, the, the average, average of your, of your three years. Highest three years. Right. So that, that really does start reducing the city's liability. Well, that's a creative model yeah. in this, in this, in this situation. And if we can do all that, we can get to financial stability in 2014. Now, uh, this show won't be broadcast for a couple of weeks after we're taping it, but the headline in today's paper is a response from the uh, head of the police union saying, no way, when, this is not going to happen. Well, look... <laughs> It's very simple. We don't have the money, uh, and we can't. We cannot meet our contractual obligations. And it, the only way we can meet them is to lay people off. It's a very simple formula. Now, what I think some employee groups would like to do is they're going to view it as a zero-sum game, and they're going to try to get more for their sector than, and take away from other sectors. We can't continue to do that in this city. We are already at nearly 70% of the budget for public safety. We used to be at 45, I think, about 10 years ago. We can't go any further. Otherwise, you run the risk of becoming an armed, armed camp. Your libraries, your public works, sure. things like the municipal ban, all the kind of value-added things, the, the quality of life things, go away. But if the plan B, which is the, the, the worst case if we don't get givebacks from the unions, goes into effect, the number of police officers is down 76 from 943 to 867. That's a big hit in this city. You have no alternative. If, if quite frankly, if the police uh, association, the POA, uh, believes that it's more important to have highly paid people but fewer of them, I can't control that. The only thing I can control is we are going to have to take a stand here that public safety is not going to be beyond 70% of the Before budget. Before the segment ends, Bob, let's talk for a moment about the relationship between crime and cops. More cops means less crime. Is not that not true? No, not necessarily. Crime has gone down in this city every year for the last six or seven years. And it's gone down from last year to this year. We've got fewer police officers this year than we did last year. This is... this well, is. maybe look, we should cut more police. No, then. I don't know. I, look, at some point it does, you have to have a sufficient number. But this is not just about numbers. You know, when I first became mayor, and let me acknowledge this, I thought it was just a numbers game. You know, well, you, you have more cops, you have more you safety. You wanted to add 100 me, cops and you and that's campaigned right. and, on and, that. That's right. And, and that would have been up to 1,000. And the fiscal conditions didn't allow that. Fair we enough. were out halfway there. It could not be that. But I also learned a lot. This is not just about, about numbers. It's about technology and it's about deployment. Look, we all talk about libraries and parks and recreation as being part of the public safety chain. They are. We, we, are, we are. So maybe that's working. So maybe all the things that we did to spend on libraries and recreation are now bearing fruit. But the Rand, the Rand Corporation recently came out with a report that's, indicating that more police means more safety, and I, they statistically demonstrated you know, that. I, 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 fine. I, I, all I can tell you is that that's not necessarily true here. It's one report. I don't know who. I don't know who commissioned it. I don't know who commissioned it. It's only one report. And look. I'm sorry, we're at the fiscal limits of this. If we don't get the police union to be reasonable and to understand, I'd love to have all these police officers working. I cannot pay them what, what well, the, the contract is. Well, fair enough. Fiscal there. necessity demands these That's correct. These and I think we have a great police chief who, in fact, will make sure that we're safe, who will be able to use deployment and technology to a greater degree, and yes. we'll be able to deal with this. Okay. We'll be continuing this conversation, but first, these messages.